is Homer, the famous Greek poet of the Iliad and the Odyssey. I was alive during the 8th century BC and known as the greatest poet of my time by the Romans. My mother's name was Cressida, and my father's name was Menos. The two most famous poems I have wrote are the Iliad and the Odyssey. The Iliad is about the Trojan War, and the Odyssey is about the way home. Over time, much of my work has been lost to time and then disintegrated. Many city-states claim that I was born there because they wanted the fame of, be of me being born there. The kind of poems that I wrote are called epics, which are very long poems. Some of my work, however, still survive, and the oldest copy of the Iliad is in a church in Venice, Italy. There are many conspiracies saying that I, that some of the things that we know about me are not true. Some say that I didn't even write the Iliad and the Odyssey because they were too long to memorize. Some also say I didn't exist, which I was just told recently by a friend that goes to Harvard. I cannot believe that some even think I didn't exist when I'm talking to you right now. Well, hello there. I'm Draco. You know, the legislator that was known for his harsh laws? Yep, that's me. Anyway, I was born in 650 BC and died in 600 BC. Unfortunately, I died when all my supporters threw pieces of clothing at me in celebration. Yeah, thanks about that. But personally, I think I accomplished a lot in those 50, 50 years. I was born in Athens, Greece, and was known for the draconian constitution. This constitution helped many residents and tourists. Bad deeds were not always noticed by the residents of Athens. So I decided that these laws needed to be written so I took ca so they could take caution of them. I took a long journey through the courthouse. Finally, my idea was approved by the court. I got to work. I started thinking about how I could write these laws down, but the process was not easy. I needed something to write with, but 2,000 years ago, they did not have ink. I looked into my brain and took a deep search in it. I finally decided that being resourceful might help. So I went around the city and collected blood from the injuries of people and used it to write. After a while of working on this, I finally completed the process. Now I posted the laws around the city. Everyone could now see them. I also helped accomplish other goals, including the death penalty of people stealing cabbage from each other. Unfortunately, it is said that Salon, an Athenian statesman, put an ending to all my laws in the sixth century. That is how the creation of a very harsh man ended. Although I was remembered, I was a well-remembered man not only by the Athenians, but many more. Yes, sir, Eagle and then sir. Oh, I'm so sorry. I sometimes speak in Greek by accident. It's just that I've written musical poetry and spoken my entire life in Greek. Be sure to call me out if I do that again. Why am I still talking about this? Anyway, let us get on with my life story while I, or I am or was important. Oh, that is so sad to think that I died over 2,500 years ago and that no one really remembers me. Wait, isn't that the point of this video? This must be the longest intro in history. Let us start from the beginning. I was born into an aristocratic, aristocratic family and was raised in a community that was mostly women and the leadership was mainly women too. I don't really remember much about my child except learning to play the lira. There I go again, speaking Greek. As I said, I don't remember anything except playing, for playing the lyre. From my early 20s to my mid 40s, I wrote musical poetry. During, during this time, I invented the Sappho poetry style. Then, my family was banished and we were forced to leave Lebos, Greece, where we had lived for as long as I could remember. As for dying, I lived to be about 50 years old. You see, the thing about dying is that you can't really remember how you died or why. So basically, that's me, Sappho, a member of musical, a lyrical poet, also known as the Tenth Muse. Hello, I am Aesop. I am a legendary Greek fabulist. I have written many fables, and a lot that are in this book I didn't. You may know me from my famous tales like the Taurus and the Hare. Let me start at the beginning. I was born around 610 BC. I can't remember the exact time. It's been so long I forget. And I died around 560 BC. I can't quite remember. It's all fuzzy, so what I say might not be true. Well, I was a slave that won my freedom. 
I lived in the court of Croesus Castle, the king of Lydia, an ancient region of, a of Asia Minor. I was named after Aesop, the Greek word for Ethiopia. After I, released, after I was released, I wrote fables and lived in Lydia or Athens or Samos. Some famous historians recorded about me and my deeds. I came up with many famous stories and spoke them orally. So if historians found out about an anonymous tale, they would put it under my name. In fact, many of the fables in the books you read, like this one, aren't actually mine. Herodotus, a Greek historian, was the first to write about me, a hundred years after my death. Many other historians also wrote about me, such as Plutarch and Aristotle. There are two popular beliefs of how I died. One of them was I stole a golden cup from Delphi. I was the target of a political witch hunt. I was then thrown from a cliff. Another way is I was a sacrifice to Aphrodite because I, wouldn't, I wasn't a good slave anymore. Anywho, that's me, Aesop. Hello, I'm Pleismes. I was born in Athens, Greece, and I was an ancient Greek leader. I introduced democracy in Athens around 508 BC. That is why people call me the father of Athenian democracy. Democareta, or rule by the people, was what I originally called democracy. Democracy is one of Greece's biggest con contributions to the modern world. I was a great leader and I always drew a crowd. I was from an aristocratic family, which means that I was born to be powerful. I was the leader of a pow powerful acclimated clan in Athens. When I ruled, I divided Athens into dems, which are sections. Each dem had a demarche, which are like modern day mayors. The people voted on everything. My parents were named Megacles, who was my father, and Agristi, who was my mother. Also, my great-grandfather was named Megacles, too. I ended up naming my son Megacles. I died at the age of 62, and my death was a mystery. Hello. I am Pythagoras. I am a mathematician and philosopher. I was born in Samos, Greece. I lived from 569 BC to 496 BC, so I lived for about 73 years. I am known for the right triangle and the equation a squared plus b squared equals c squared. It is hard to speak of me because I did not leave any of my writings behind. I immigrated to Italy in about 532 BC. I lived I believe that the human soul is reincarnated, and I also believe in cosmos. I was taught mathematics by Thales, who brought mathematics to the Greeks from e ancient Egypt. I was in the upper middle class and was very active. I was one of the first to teach that the earth was at the center of the universe. I was also one of the first to teach that the world was round an idea not to be proven for almost another 1,000 years. I also discovered that the orbit of the moon is inclined to the equator of the Earth. I was also the first person to make the connection that Venus as the evening star is the same as Venus the morning star. Hi, I'm Pinder the Poet and I was born in 518 BC in Sinoscephalae. My full name is Pandaros. My family is a noble Spartan family, and my uncle is Capilinus. Cool, right? I currently live in Thebes, and I am working on 17 volumes of poetry. It's very stressful. I write mainly victory odes, but it's all lyric poetry, so songs. I only finished four books so far, but I'm working on it. I really started in my career because I won a bunch of poetry contests. My very favorite admirers are Theron and Hera. Yep, cool dudes. These guys, Simonides and Bacchylides. Yeah, they don't really like me. I'm not sure why. I'm a nice guy. I died in 438 BC, and I'm just the friendly spirit of him. Hopefully whoever sees me isn't afraid, but now I have to go and potentially spook some other people. Goodbye. Hey, I'm Phidias. I am the best group sculpture of all time. And yes, I built one of the seven wonders. Guess which one it is? It is the Zeus sculpture. I'm the best. You don't have to say it twice. I was born in uh, 490 and died in 430. I'm the talking dead, not the walking dead. My father was Carmides. My brother's name is Panonos. Panonos was a painter. Panonos painted the paint, paint, painting 
of the War of Marathon. I was 10 when the war started. Uh, you should feel bad for me because I had to witness all that violence at such a young age. Uh, he got somewhat famous, but not as famous as me. I guess my dad and brother never told me my mom's name because she was not important. Uh, none of my other artworks exist other than my, my Great Zeus sculpture. I call it the Great Zeus. The Great Zeus is 43 feet tall. I know, it's kind of a big deal. Um, I built the Athena statue, but the Romans had to steal it. They probably took it because it was so good. Uh, I was the only sculptor in my time that was actually remembered. So as you know, I'm Fadice and I'm amazing. Toodaloo! Hello, I'm Aspasia. I know I'm dead, but I came back from the underworld for this poster. I live 470 BC to 400 BC. Some people would ask who cares about me. I'm going to tell you why I'm important. I was a very well-known person, mostly because I was married to the statesman, Hercules. I am also a philosopher, which is someone that teaches. One of my students was Socrates. Yes, I taught one of the smartest people in Greece. Some say I taught him for revenge on Hercules, but those are just theories. My father was Exodus of Miletus. Miletus is where I was born. It is now known as Turkey. Later moved to Athens at an older age. As soon as I got to Athens, I did not get treated right. An example is I had to pay tax to live there. I also had to stay away from philosophical debates, but some I was allowed in. My son Hercules the Younger was also treated the same way that I was. He was excluded from civic participation. Later he became a citizen and was also a general. A few years later, Hercules died of a plague, a disease. The funeral was delivered in a war. I was left defenseless. After he died, I was linked to Lysicles. A few years later, I died. My death is still a mystery. Hello, I'm Socrates, born in 470 BC. You might be asking yourself, who cares about an old man with a big beard and long, unwashed hair? First, I made a big impact on today's basic Western philosophy. Many think I was just a philosopher, philosopher, but I was also a hoplite who saved an Athenian leader in battle. battle. To do this, I was born into a moderately wealthy family. After I fought in the Athenian army, I got married. I could have been open to a lot of ideas, but as I said, if you marry a good wife, you'll be happy. If you marry a bad one, you'll become a philosopher. And so, and so I became a philosopher. I had not write anything of my own. So Plato and Xenophon have wrote most records about me. During my time as a philosopher, I pondered about the limits of human knowledge. I had no care for multiple gods and believed in one god. Since I was out, out of place in such a beautiful and refined city, like Athens, city state like Athens, I was usually mocked and played about my incompetence. In the final days of my life, I was put on trial because I corrupted the youth. I was also sentenced to death for not honoring the Athenian gods. When I went to trial, instead of defending myself, I asked for free meals from the Pyrotinium, which was only for the winner of the Olympics. I died from the executioner's cup of deadly hemlock poison. So here I am, a spirit who is famously remembered for the Socratic method which was when you question everything that uh, the other person was saying. Goodbye, everyone, and I'm slowly floating up to heaven. Hello, I'm Thucydides. I was born in 460 and died in 404 BC. Did you know that I was one of the greatest historians? Yeah, that's pretty cool, don't you think? Although very little is known about me, here are some facts that might interest you. I lived in the Athenian suburb, some suburb of Alamos, but my family is from Thrace in northeastern Greece. My father's name was Alorus, my mom's was Igis Sapali. My family also owned gold mines in my town. I am a writer who wrote the book about the Peloponnesian War and was an Athenian general in the same war. Most of the questions I asked were timeless, so not many people could answer them. I also had a gifted analysis of power. I relied on the testimony of eyewitnesses from the Peloponnesian War to write my book. I was an aristocrat, and in 424 BC, I was given command of a naval fleet. That was, that was a great achievement for me. I am also known for the Thucydides trap 
which refers to rising power, causing fear that escalates towards war. I was banished from Athens for failure to save Amphipolis. I was murdered on my way back to Athens. That is me, Thucydides. People call me the father of comedy. That's right, you guessed it, I'm Aristophanes. I was born in Athens in 448 BCE and died in Delphi, Greece in 385 BCE. I was part of a clan named Pandonus, but I wasn't born there. I had three children who were named Avaros, Philippopus, and Nicostratus. Which is a funny because my father's name was Philip Paus, but I don't know. Which is very similar to my son's name, Philip Paus. I wrote comedies and performed at a Dionysia, Dionysia. My first play was believed to be the Artarians by mankind, mankind today, but I know it for a fact. I wrote 11 plays people know about today, but my most succe- successful plays were the Lysistra, the Wasps, and the Bird. You probably are asking, who inspired you to do comedy? Well, I gotta say, it was the Peloponnesian War. Why, you ask? Because because we lost the Peloponnesian War, so it was a very depressing time for the people of Athens. Hello, I am Plato. I'm a Phila officer. I was taught by Socrates, who taught um, a way of thinking by asking questions and that affected how I see the world today. Socrates and I had a powerful relationship. I was quite sad about Socrates' death. After Socrates died, I spent time in Egypt and in, in, and in e- Southern Italy, traveling and studying with other great thinkers like Pythagoras. Then I finally went home to Athens. I opened up a school of my own in the grove of the Academia at the Academy of my greatest student as Aristotle. But my least favorite student was Dion. He went against me and sold me into slavery when I was in Syracuse. And by chance an admirer purchased my freedom. I was very lucky. I returned to Athens, but I was also lucky at my birth. My father was Ariston and my mother was Parison. Both came from rich families that had connections to the royal young, to the royal family. After my father died, my m- mother married to Persicilis. Since I was young, I was interested in learning. I found that by asking simple questions about things in daily life, I could start conversations that promote to deep thinking. Socrates taught me how to use dialogue to use deep thinking, but I took it my farther questions and using logic. Same with some of the things I question are just as what is love define these things it promotes deep thinking I had a long lucky life I was buried on the academy grounds hello people I am Aristotle and I am one of the greatest philosophers ever I was born to Nicomachus and Phaestus on 384 BC in Stagira in central Macedonia and died sadly on 322 BC in Calchas, the chief town of Euboea. I was taught by the incredible Plato and in turn I taught Alexander the Great, who became king of Macedon. Here's why you should care about me. One thing is I created syllogism. It is declarative statements formulated in such a fashion to defend an argument. For example, all cats are animals, all Russian blues are cats, therefore, all Russian blues are animals. I'm also known for having the theory of the four elements. I think everything is made up of a combination of earth, water, fire, and air. For example, a burning fire, a burning fire has air rising in smoke form, fire lighting it, it, earth from the wood and water bubbling from it. 
Also, though most people don't believe me, I say the earth is round. Listen up. If the earth was flat, a ship would sail into the distance and it would shrink till it disappeared and fall off the edge. Who thinks that? But if the earth was round, the ship would, wouldn't fade away, but it would actually kind of sink into the ocean as it leaves. I experimented this and proved my theory. <coughs> Wait, help, I can't breathe. Hi, my name is Aristarchus. I am a Greek astronomer, mathematician, and scientist, and I lived in 200 BCE. I am best known for trying to figure out the sizes and distances between the sun, moon, and earth, but some of my final estimations were wrong. I was raised in Samos, Greece, which probably shouldn't be part of Greece because it is on an island almost touching Asia Minor. Anyway, let's get back to the story. Since it isn't really in it, since it is really in the middle of nowhere, I went to Athens to study, and eventually went to the famous Lyce Lyceum and got taught by Strato, who was the head there. If you hadn't noticed, there is a crater on the moon that is named after me. I guess that's all thanks to Strato, because he taught me most of what I know. Anyway, I think that's all I have to say for today, so goodbye for now, and maybe I'll see you again some other time. Hello, I am Archimedes. I am a mathematician and scientist. I was born in 200, 287 BC and died in 212 BC in Syracuse, Sicily. A Roman soldier killed me and did not know who I was. My dad was an astronomer. My dad was named as Philides. There was very little known about my family. I went to the Alexander the Great School in Egypt, which had a great ed education. I love teasing other mathematicians by saying the answer without even thinking very well. I solve many problems, for example, figuring out the Archimedes Principle. The Archimedes Principle is when you dip a certain amount of mass into a perfectly level pool and it'll spill the same amount of mass. Funny thing was I found it out in the bathtub. I ran through the city naked saying, Iruka, that meant I solved it. I invented the Archimedes screw, the claw, pie, and more. I am one of the top three mathematicians in history. Also, I designed a boat that sailed to Egypt as a present for the king. We still use some of my inventions today. For example, the Archimedes screw. It pulls water out of the ground on a ramp. A crater of the moon was named after me. I may have been related to King Huron. I gotta go figure out another problem and tease some more mathematicians. Goodbye.